Hello friends, welcome back. In this tutorial, we will study about algebraic structures. So, the combination of the set and the operations that are applied on the elements of the set is called an algebraic structure. Here, we will study three common algebraic structures, groups, rings, and fields. So, first of all, we will study about groups. A group G is a set of elements with a binary operation star that satisfies these four properties. First one is closure property right so according to this closure property what happens if a and b are elements of group g then whatever the result c is produced after applying this binary operation star on a and b then that result c should also be an element of group g second is associativity property according to this property if a b and c are elements of group g then this equation must be true now, the third property is existence of an identity. According to this uh, property, for all elements A of group G, there exists an element E which is called the identity element. And when we perform the binary operation star between this uh, identity element E and any element A of group G, the result will always be the element A. So according to this uh, property existence of identity, uh, what happens for all the elements A which are in group G, for all these elements A, there exists an identity element E. So when we perform uh, binary operation star between this uh, identity element E and any element A of group uh, G, we will get A as result. Fourth property is existence of an inverse. According to this property, for each element A in group G, there exists uh, an element A dash which is called the inverse of element A. And when we perform binary operation star between A and uh, A dash, the result will be an identity element E. Right. So according to this uh, property, what happens uh, there for each element A of group G, there is an inverse. And when we perform the binary operation star between the element and its inverse, the result will be an identity element. Now, next topic is abelian group. So what happens if a group also satisfies one extra property called commutativity, then that group is called abelian group, right? So what is this commutativity property? According to this property, if A uh, and B are elements uh, in G, then A star B should be equal to B star A. Right. So, according to this uh, property, commutativity for all elements A and B in G, we have A star B is equal to B star A. So, if any group which satisfies this commutativity property also, then that group is called abelian group and abelian group is also called commutative group. Now, let us study about ring. So, a ring denoted as R is equal to this. Here, this represents a set and this star and rectangle, they represent binary operations. So a ring has a set and two binary operations. So a ring is a, an algebraic structure with a set and two binary operations which are represented here by a star and rectangle. So the first operation of ring must satisfy all five properties of the abelian group. That is closure property, associativity, commutativity, existence of identity and existence of inverse. So first operation of ring must satisfy these five properties. Now the second operation of the ring must satisfy only these two properties, closure property and associativity. And another thing is that the second operation which is represented here by a rectangle, it must be distributive over the first operation star. So what is the meaning of that this second operation rectangle is distributive over the first operation star? It means that for all elements A, B and C of R, these two equations must hold. So when these two equations uh, hold, then it means that a second operation rectangle is distributive over the first operation star. So a ring in which the commutative property is also satisfied uh, for the second operation is called a commutative ring. Now we will study about field. So a field is denoted as like this. So here this is a set and star and rectangle they represent two binary operations 
So if field F is a commutative ring in which the second operation satisfies all five properties defined for the first operation, except that the identity element of the first operation has no inverse with respect to the second operation. A finite field is a field with finite number of elements. Galois showed that for a field to be finite, the number of elements should be p raised to the power n, where p is a prime and n is a positive integer. The finite fields are usually called Galois field and denoted as gf p raised to the power n. A Galois field gf p raised to the power n is a finite field with p raised to the power n elements. Now in this field you can see gf p raised to the power n when n is equal to 1 then we have gf p field. Now consider this set z p. This set z p as I told you in previous tutorial also it has elements 0, 1, 2, 3 so on up to p minus 1. So this set z p is a gf p field with two operations addition modulo p and multiplication modulo p. Now let us see an example. Now let us see this example z7. Here 7 is a prime number. So z7 is a gfp field with two operations addition modulo 7 and multiplication modulo 7. So here we are defining gf7 on z7 with two operations. right? So here in this table you can see that this table shows the result of addition modulo 7 operation on every pair of uh, elements of set z7 and here in this table you can see the result of modulo 7 operation on every pair of uh, elements of set z7 so when you observe this table which shows the result of uh, addition modulo 7 operation on every pair of elements of set z7 then you can see that the identity element is 0 because when you perform addition modulo 7 operation between 0 and any other element of set z7 the result will be the other element of set z7 so 0 is the identity element for this operation addition modulo 7 now see in this table in this table you can see that the identity element is 1 in this table you can see that the identity element is 1 for this operation multiplication modulo 7 because when you perform multiplication modulo 7 operation between 1 and any other element of set z7 then what happens you will get the other element of set z7 as an result right you will get the other element of set z7 as a result therefore what happens to the identity element identity element with respect to this operation multiplication modulo 7 is 1 now see this table now this table uh, what this table does this table shows the inverse of every element of uh, set z7 with respect to the addition modulo 7 operation and the multiplication modulo 7 operation so when you see this table you can see that every element of set z7 has an inverse with respect to addition modulo 7 operation but only the identity element of addition modulo 7 operation right only this identity element that is zero right identity element of uh, addition modulo 7 operation it does not have inverse with respect to multiplication modulo 7 operation as you can see here in this table right uh, but other elements of set z7 they have uh, the inverse with respect to the multiplication modulo 7 operation right